Thank you for downloading this podcast. My name is Richard Rucroft. You're listening to Gnostic Lectures. This is a special episode, episode three of three, the third in the series, Sex, A Stairway to Heaven and A Stairway to Hell. My host today, Mr. E. Jim G. Ross. How are you, Jim? Fine. Thank you, Rick. Uh, thank you for inviting me again. It's it's an honor to be here. So we've Rick. done we've done two special episodes already, and this is the third in the series, right? That's correct. Yes. Number one was uh, sex: a stairway to heaven or a stairway to hell, a scientific approach. Number two, same title. It was a religious approach, connected with the Bible the Old Testament, the New Testament, and also we mention many other sacred books from different religions that speak or describe about the same concept. Today, we are having an esoteric approach. And it's important to try to understand the meaning of the word esoteric. So allow me to ask you, Rick, what would you understand for the word esoteric? Well, esoteric um, generally means uh, hidden or spiritual or uh, occult. The word occult, of course, comes from uh, like when the moon is occluded by clouds, it means it's hidden. So hidden, uh, from a scientific point of view, I guess anything esoteric is, uh, doesn't exist as far as they're concerned. So um, yeah, anything that is hidden or hidden from the vast majority of people, but not necessarily from everyone, right? Yeah, my, my perception is the word had been too much, you know, too much abused. And that means people have no respect for the concept much longer. But it is our duty to try to explain why is this an esoteric approach? Because most of people would never say that science and religion should work together. But Albert Einstein, that we consider a genius, a true genius, a true scientific genius, he said, science without religion lames. Religion without science is blind. So that sounds like an esoteric approach, mm -hmm. something unknown to the vast majority of people. Because in reality, we have divided strongly science and religion. There are people who are scient scientists and they are materialistic scientists and also atheists. And on the other extreme, we do have religious people who are dogmatic and fanatic. And that creates a confrontation between both uh, positions. And of course, according to those perceptions, it would be impossible to connect them. But here, according to what we are trying to explain, an esoteric approach is very much that. What Albert Einstein described, and also what we are saying right now, that spirit and matter should always work together. And this is our esoteric approach today regarding sexuality or sexology. Because when people are teaching sexology or sexuality, they are very much incomplete. And our mission is to try to clarify how can we really attempt to complete that perception of a true sexuality, a true sexology, in a respectable manner. So we said before in the past, you know, that in New York, a scientific community discovered the Caretza method, which is a way to procreate babies without losing, you know, through an ejaculation, seven million spermatozoos, because we need only one to procreate the baby. And in reality, in that scientific community that lived in New York, in the 1800s, at the end of the 1800s and beginning of 1900s, this scientific community, after they experienced 30 years living together, they realized that all their children that were born in that community became true genius, geniuses. They wrote a lot of books about it. 
and that experience was transferred to Europe. And in Europe, they added the name Carezza. Carezza in Italian language means touching with tenderness. In Spanish, we call it caricia, acariciar, caricia. So basically, you know, this is a scientific approach that we described before regarding a new way, something new, something we could also say esoteric from a scientific point of view, a new way of having sex. And then in parts two, in our religious approach, we touched the Bible, the Old Testament and the New Testament. We discussed what Moses said in Leviticus 15 to 18. Clearly, he describes, you know, what's wrong while having sex and losing our sperm. And also all kind of atrocities committed while, while people are having sex, having sex with animals, for example, or with dead bodies. These, these are atrocities. And science today know that all venereal disease is coming from having sex with animals. Of course, you know, Moses knew about that at that time, so it was a religious approach, but at the same time, it was very much scientific. Then the Ten Commandments of Moses. Commandment number six, he said, you shall not commit fornication. And fornication means losing our semen. In every ejaculation, a man loses seven million spermatozoos, and we need only one to procreate the baby, to procreate life. And commandment number nine, Moses speaks about adultery, which is having sex with more than a sexual partner, exchanging, you know, sexual partners. And we explained that already, that sex is something complex, something very much unknown, even to official science, because the sexual energy is so powerful. And somebody has said, I have listened to some scientific approach regarding that, that it's like having a nuclear bomb within ourselves. The sexual energy is so powerful. It's the same solar energy descending from the sun and the stars. And it's also the same electricity. It's the same sexual energy that we all carry within ourselves. But also in the Bible, we spoke about Jesus Christ, the New Testament, when he, you know, when he had a meeting with a Jewish rabbi, Jesus was also a rabbi, and he was talking to Nicodemus. And clearly he told Nicodemus, if you want to be born again, you need to work with the fire and the water. And Nicodemus responded, you know, how can you talk about this, you know, master, when I, I'm already a grown up human being? How can you say I need to be born again? And Jesus repeated, if you want to continue being born again, you need to unite fire and water to ascend into the light, to get closer to God. Well, all of this is connected with sexuality because we are all here because of sex. And sex had been so much manipulated and abused as a concept with sad experiences like when we have made of sexuality a business, when people have developed pornography, making movies and magazines and all of that. Today in the internet, we can find pornography, which is really for some people, it's interesting, you know, it gets them excited, but on the other side, it degrades mainly women. And when, when all of that is used to promote children being abused sexually, that's also a crime, a horrible crime. And this is, you know, we can call it infrasex. And this has nothing to do with occult, you know, or esoteric approach into sexuality, on the contrary, this is a very animal, a very gross, you know, a very abusive way of perceiving sexuality. Because if life, if life really should be divine, sex also should be considered respectable and divine. So an esoteric approach then will try to explain something 
extremely important to all of us. Because what's the purpose really of sex? We can say that there are three, three approaches. And this is now connected with our theme today. We can call it supra-sex, higher than common sex, and higher than infra-sex. As we said, pornography and even prostitution is infra-sex, where people only care about animal pleasure, without commitments, even abusing other people through sexual activities. Infra-sex. Now, common sex is connected with procreation, but today common sex has become also very well connected to infrasex because today we have husbands and wives who abuse each other. You see, a, a husband who rapes his wife when he's drunk, when he's taking drugs or too much alcohol. You see, things like that happen all the time. And this is common sex. And then children are being born by accident. They never plan to have kids. We said that already before. But now when we are approach today the concept of supra-sex, there are three, three ways of perceiving that. Number one, procreation, of course, but procreation in a different manner, eliminating only one sperm, spermatozoa. Only one. This is all what we need to procreate. But if we don't want to procreate, we don't need to lose anything. So number two, isn't it the purpose of experiencing, experiencing pleasure? Of course, pleasure is, a, is something that can never be denied to anybody. But based on experience by the Oneida community in New York and based on the experience of our schools of, of Gnostic anthropology all over the world and based on the experience of master who wrote books like the one we mentioned in the Bible in Leviticus 15 to 18. You know, Moses experienced all of that and it is much more pleasurable to have this kind of esoteric, you know, approach into sexuality because a man and a woman who really like, respect and love each other, they will end adoring, adoring each other by being connected for one hour or much longer than one minute that most of people, you know, experience today. People get hyper excited, men and women, and after one minute, they are both exhausted, falling asleep, and there is no attraction any longer. And of course, the relationship will end very fast because they don't like each other any longer. But by doing it this other way, when a couple really feel attraction for each other, when they care about each other, and they really want to learn a new experience, a supra kind, a superior kind of experience through sexuality, the pleasure is much more longer and much more divine. We can use the word divine. And number three, People, you know, would say, oh, this is impossible, but um, we are telling you that we are just reinforcing this conception that this is a way to ascend into higher levels of being. When we speak about evolution, you know, the evolution of the species, we all know, you know, that there is a, a mineral kingdom, there is a vegetal kingdom, there is an animal kingdom, and we consider ourselves humans. But according to Gnostic anthropology, Gnostic psychology, Gnostic cosmology, we are not real humans. We are incomplete human beings. It's like we are a fallen humanity. We are designed to become real humans, but we lost the stage of perfection connected with animals, and we descended from the real human's kingdom into the animal kingdom with human appearance. So we should really be called intellectual animals instead of real humans. Why? Because real humans have 12 senses. Why do we have only five? Because we enter into a stage of degeneration. And allow me to say this, you know, with all respect 
and in a very humble manner, I have met people within the Gnostic schools of anthropology who have 12 senses. And I have experienced that we all have the potential to develop seven superior senses added to the five that makes 12. So according to Gnostic anthropology, Gnostic psychology, this is normal for a real human being. We should all have 12 senses. Where are those seven superior senses coming from? Well, they are coming from a developed human organism. We have seven endocrine glands. And those seven endocrine glands are atrophied. Why? Why are they atrophied? Why is it that they are not functioning properly? The tremendous answer, you know, is we are responsible because we lose our semen. Because even if it sounds arrogant and selfish, we don't know how to make love. We only know how to imitate animals. But we haven't learned to practice a real human sex. And the real human sex is based on losing only one spermatozoa to procreate. And if, you, if we don't want to procreate a baby, we don't need to lose anything. So when we don't do it, we transform our organisms because that energy stays inside. And instead of affecting us in a negative manner, it will increase our strength, it will reinforce our health, physical, mental, emotional health. We will make us live longer. And also, the seven endocrine glands will be shining electricity. Because the sexual energy is a combination of fire, electricity, and also our semen. And this is the mystery of the water and fire described in the Bible by Jesus Christ when he spoke to this other rab rabbi, explaining clearly that to be born again, to be born again where? Within the real human being's kingdom. Because now we are part of the animal kingdom with human appearance. So we need to be born again. Now, is anybody speaking about this? Of course not. And this is why we, we are talking as an esoteric approach, something very much unknown. I've been talking to doctors, biologists, scientists about the same concept. And they say, most of them, I never heard about that. When you speak to them about, about tantric sex, they say, oh, I've heard about that. Do you practice this? No, I have no idea about this. And they are scientists, you see. But also you speak to religious leaders, pastors, reverends, priests. Most of them ignore completely about this. So this is why this is an esoteric approach. And we are an esoteric school. But Gnostic anthropology is a combination of Gnostic psychology and Gnostic cosmology, which is a new approach into reality, in, into a more perception, a more complete perception of reality. So when people are convinced that through evolution we are all going to ascend into higher levels of being, with all respect, we have to say that this is not true. We evolved up to the level where we are today, but to ascend into a higher level than the one where we are today, we need something different. Evolution is not enough. We've been evolving for millions of years. And look at the result. We have become worse than before. Today, you know, that it, we have a, a huge population, billions of people on Earth, and poverty is everywhere, hunger is everywhere, wars, violence everywhere, injustices everywhere. You see, are we evolving? Are we becoming better? The answer is no. Maybe technologically we have advanced, but psychologically we behave worse than animals sometimes because we have developed an animal psychology instead of a true human psychology. And this is connected with our esoteric approach you see, the esoteric approach 
is connected with the relationship between spirit and matter, because we are composed of both. In past lectures, we described that we all descended from the Absolute. What is the Absolute? It's the great reality of all realities. We were there as a spiritual beings, and we descended into matter as part of a process of being able to come back to the Absolute in a higher level of being. It's like, you know, there is an esoteric sentence uh, very much important that says, what's above is below. What's below is above. What's within is outside. What's outside is within. It means that what's happening within the Absolute is also happening here, within matter and energy. So we descended, we could say, from a spiritual universe, and we were planted here within matter and energy as a school of learning. We are here, you know, to learn something. So when we are able to come back to the Absolute, to the homeland of our real being, the homeland of the spirit, we'll be able, we would be able to ascend into a higher level. But we need this experience here. And this is why we've been planted on Earth. This is our planet. And every planet has similar experiences. And this is why, you know, if we are here physically as product of a sexual relationship between our physical parents and the ancestors behind our physical parents, so, same thing happened with the creation of the universe. You know, when we speak about the Absolute, we can say the Absolute is one, oneness. We are all, you know, part of that oneness. Of course, with different levels of being. But that oneness was divided into two to be able to create the universe. And two means male and female, or a spirit masculine aspect and matter, feminine aspect. The word matter is a descending from Latin matter, which means mother in English, mother. Mother nature, mother earth, all mothers of the universe, a feminine aspect of creation. And the spirit, we could say, is a masculine aspect or fire. So the light of the Absolute transform into two forces, fire and water. And this is the duality of the universe. But then the spirit needed to be transformed also into three, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So we are going to be explaining all of that. And this is part of a process of the ascension to be able to ascend back into the Absolute. And sex, again, is the force, is the exchange of energies that allow us to be born, to create and recreate life over and over again. But in reality, what is life descending? You know, when people speak about the Big Bang, in reality, this is not what really happened, you know. Maybe the Big Bang is connected with sounds we can perceive within the universe. But what about the black holes? There is a mystery about the black holes, you know. And now, when Albert Einstein discovered the fourth dimension, and he proved it scientifically, he opened the door to discover the fifth dimension and the sixth dimension, and other higher dimensions. So the absolute descends into matter and energy through these black holes. So life belongs to the Absolute. So life is descending from there, not through a cosmic explosion or the Big Bang. So this is the essence of life. And here, you know, we experience different kinds of manifestations of life. And, and here we are. So when we became to the actual stage, you know, in, in past lecture, we described the races on Earth and how we have fallen from a stage of grace. And here we are a fallen human race. But 
most of people, religious people, don't like to talk about the real reason why we have fallen, why the Adams and the Eves fell. They never say that the cause was a, a sexual cause, sexuality, a wrong sexuality, a wrong sexology. So this is why we lost the human stage and we descended into the animal kingdom with human appearance. So this is why now it's important to try to comprehend that the fire and water, water is our own semen. Remember what we said before, we are made of semen, the semen of our parents, father and mother, and all our ancestors. But also that semen is activated by the fire, the electricity of the body, the solar energy, the sexual energy or the spirit. Spirit and matter working together, this is what we are, together. And this is also the mystery of the cross. So we can advance something, you know, that is going to happen for sure within the future. And we said it already in a past lecture, where science will become religious and religion will become scientific. That is, that is sound crazy. I believe it does for many people, but this is also an esoteric approach into science and religion because they are going to become one. And this is the mystery of the cross that even Christian people or Catholic people don't give the importance of it. They don't understand that the vertical line is the spirit and the horizontal line is matter. We are composed of both and we need to cross both. When we procreate the baby, that baby is connected with our own matter. But the spirit, our own spirit doesn't create their spirit. They, are, they have a, an independent spirit. So again, life will manifest between spirit and matter connected all the time. We can never separate them. And in the Jewish religion, we see two triangles united. One pointing up and the other pointing down. That's exactly the same concept. You see, a spirit and matter. And now, we spoke before about alchemy and Kabbalah. This is very, very important because the Bible and all sacred books of all religions are written in the same codified language, alchemy and Kabbalah. And this is also in the first book of the Bible, the book of Genesis, the first three the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and the second tree, the tree of life. And at that time, the Adams and the Eves were told not to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, only to eat from the tree of life, because they were already an ascended humanity. They were an angelical humanity at that time. So they only needed to work together eating from the tree of life, which is the spirit itself. The spirit is life itself that has always been, will always be. It will never die because it was, it was never born. Something that our brains cannot understand because we only accept a beginning and an end to everything. And this happens within matter. But the spirit is different. The spirit has always been, will always be. So essentially, eating from the tree of life would give the Adams and the Eve the possibility of ascending higher to a higher level of beings. They were already complete human beings, but they were given the key, the key to become resurrected superior beings or Christified or resurrected masters because they would have become the perfect son or the perfect daughter of creation. What Jesus Christ experienced, what all founders of all religions have done. So by doing it, you know, eating from the tree of life, they would have continued doing what they already did in ancient times, maybe in another planet, maybe when the moon was a planet and before the moon died and became a moon, and then we were planted again on earth, but these people were already ascended people. We could say we could call them angels that needed to reincarnate 
but they were complete human beings, people with 12 senses instead of five. We already described in past lectures that the Adams and the Eve, they had the power using their superior senses to look into the stars and to see with the third eye connected with the pituitary gland, they were capable to see humanities that live in other planets. They were able to communicate telepathically with those humanities without any electronic device that we need today <laughs> to communicate, communicate long distance. So they were superior beings. They were our true ancestors, complete human beings. And they fell. Why did they fall? Because instead of obeying what the divinity told them, instead of eating from the tree of life to ascend into a higher level of perfection, they ate, they disobeyed the command, and they ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And they experienced ejaculation or orgasm, which is imitating animals, because animals do that. But animals are okay because animals need to procreate. But animals don't lose their semen the way we do it too much, especially if we become addicted to the orgasm. Without ignoring, without knowing that illness, all illnesses come from losing our semen. You know, the Adams and the Eves knew no illness. They didn't know was we experience today so, so many illnesses and one of the worst is cancer and most of people today are dying of cancer and the cause is losing our semen you see the point because we destroy the immune system in every ejaculation and also because we are children of fornication this is fornication losing our semen we are children of fornication we are already born defective incomplete we carry the virus of cancer. Cancer is a molecular virus. It's too small to be perceived through instruments. Only with it's got grown up a lot, our scientists discover it when it is sometimes too late. But you know, this is something very important to be shared with the entire human race. We don't want you to believe us. We want you to experience. Don't follow us. Console your inner being. Pray and meditate every day. Learn to talk to the divinity. If you are an atheist, well, it'll be harder for you. But make an attempt. We are talking to you in a respectful manner. So basically, since then, the Adams and the Eves lost the stage of grace. They lost their 12 senses. And they became the way we are today with only five senses. And even our five senses are defect defective because dogs can hear better than we do and can see better than we do, you see. And, and we are supposed to be superior than dogs and cats. You see the point? So in, we enter into involution. So that means evolution is not enough to help us to ascend into a higher level of being. So this is why what we need is a superior cosmic law. And we call it the revolution of consciousness through the law of sacrifice. Sacrifice from Latin means sacred office. Sacred office. Something sacred. And how do we do that? And this is what we call the synthesis. The synthesis of all knowledge. You know, in our galaxy, according to Gnostic anthropology and Gnostic cosmology, we are ruled by hundreds of cosmic laws, hundreds. But those hundreds of cosmic laws, they are very hard to remember and very hard to apply. Only true masters are very much aware, people who have awakened their objective consciousness, like the resurrected masters. But common individuals like us, you know, it's very complicated to try to comprehend and remember so many cosmic laws. And this is why the synthesis was given already by all the founders of all religions. And Moses brought them into the Ten Commandments. And remember what we said before, the commandment number six is, 
you shall not fall into fornication, losing our semen. And commandment number nine, you shall not commit adultery. Don't have change with different sexual partners because you contaminate your energies by doing that. We said that already before, if you have sex with a prostitute or a woman with a male prostitute who has slept already with a lot of people, sometimes criminal minds, evil individuals, they transmit all their karma, their bad luck, through a sexual connection, a sexual relationship. And that prostitute will transfer that negative force into the husband or the wife, and they will transmit that bad luck into their relationship. You see, and this is adultery, and nobody's talking about this. This is purely esoteric, unknown to most of people. And fornication, of course, many people will feel scandalized. Come on. But when people are dying of cancer, it's extremely painful and sad when a relative dies of cancer, terminal cancer. And most of people today are dying of cancer. You see, the founder of the School of Gnostic Anthropology in our modern times, an archangel, you know, a superior human being, a resurrected martyr, Samael Anver, he said in one sentence, if people knew what they are going to lose when they are going to fornicate, Instead of going laughing, they should go crying, which is an anticipation of the future. When you are dying of cancer, you cry, you suffer. And that was the consequence of her wrong sexual behavior out of ignorance. Religious ignorance, scientific ignorance. So we need to put both together, science and religion to be able to find the truth. But through expedience, come on, expedience, and that's the mother of science, expedience. When you put both together, we cannot fail. And also when we annihilate the animal psychology and transform it into a true human psychology. So Moses in Leviticus 15 to 18 described with all kind of details what was, what was told to him by Lord Jehovah? You see, I recommend that you, all of you, even if you are a priest or a pastor or a bishop or an archbishop, if you never paid attention enough, please read that and pray to God to give you more inspiration about that and meditate about that. Have a dialogue with the divinity. Don't follow us. Follow your inner God within your heart, within your soul. Now, if you are a scientist and you are an atheist, materialistic scientist, well, make it try, you know. Are you really serious about science? Are you really willing to serve humanity, mankind, through science? Or you don't really care? Or you only want to work for the big laboratories doing research a bad research, because if you never discovered what we are talking right now, it means that your research has always been incomplete. So, pay attention to this, because this is not our words. This is already written within the cosmos. It's written within every human cell. It's written within every brain, every heart, within our own spirit. It's written with fire and water, because we are made of fire and water. So, isn't it time to learn to know more about ourselves? Because Gnosis means knowledge, but the higher way of Gnosis is self-knowledge. Do we know who we are? We don't even know that. We know nothing about ourselves, or very little about ourselves. We don't even know that we had normally 12 senses. 12 senses instead of five. Because our endocrine glands have collapsed. And through practice of this superior kind of sex, real human sex, in different religions they call it with different names. Kundalini Yoga in India, Hindu religion, 
Tantra Yoga, why Tantra within Buddhism? You see, the alchemy is persecuted by the Inquisition. They spoke about sexual alchemy. You see, in all different religions, they had a name for that. We call it human sex. There are so many concepts, or the arcanum, the divine arcanum, etc., etc. The point is, this is the natural way of completing ourselves to become true humans again, complete human beings, to compensate what we have lost before the universe, to become true humans again. And, it, and as we said before, the two trees in Genesis, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and the tree of life, well, the tree of life is the same spirit. And the tree of knowledge is matter, matter, matter. Or that you can ex study it through science. The trouble is, we never understood the concept of good and evil, right and wrong. You know, our materialistic essay science is wrong because it has divorced from the spirit, from the tree of life, from life itself. So, and the other part, the tree of knowledge of good is alchemy or alchemy science, which are learning to transform, you see, matter into energy and energy will come back into matter or levels and levels of energy. And this is why the ancient alchemists were talking about transforming lead into gold or transforming matter into spirit or spiritualizing matter. And after we have reached that level of, we can call it perfection, a level of perfection when matter is becoming closer to the spirit, then the spirit will be able to descend, to connect and to produce a fusion. And that's the mystery of resurrection where superior beings reach the perfect stage of a resurrected master or a Christified. You know, many people believe that Christ is only one person. They speak about Jesus Christ. And they are wrong. With all respect, they are wrong. Because the Christ is a force. is not a person. Jesus incarnated the Christ, that divine force. It means the perfect son of creation. But you know, Jesus is actually higher than that. Jesus incarnated the Father much higher than the Christ. This is why Jesus is the highest of the highest superior being who has walked on earth. And all the other founders of religion, you know, Moses, Moses is higher than a superior human being. Moses is a superman. He's a resurrected master. Moses resurrected. Moses incarnated the Christ. And this is why you can see there he invoked the water the ocean and the ocean listened to him, obeyed to his command. He spoke to the air and the air obeyed to him. He spoke to the fire. He spoke to Mother Nature and Mother Nature obeyed. Why? He was given the keys of the mysteries of life and death. He defeated death. He defeated physical death. You see the point? So the two trees of Genesis the tree of knowledge, good and evil, and the tree of life are something extremely important. They are the same alchemy and Kabbalah. And the Bible is written in that codified language from the beginning till the end. So if you really want to study the Bible at the spirit of the letter, you have to learn alchemy and Kabbalah to understand everything. The trouble is most of people who read the Bible memorize it and they read it at the death letter. They forget the spirit of the letter because they know nothing about alchemy and Kabbalah, which is a codified language. It is the language of the angelical kingdom. It is the language of the Christified, of the archangels, of the angelical kingdoms. You see, and we know nothing about that language, but it's time to learn about it. Kabbalah is reflected everywhere in the universe. I'm sorry, alchemy and Kabbalah, both. For example, you know, what is water? Isn't it the combination of hydrogen and oxygen? 
So what if we describe it from an esoteric point of view? What if we say hydrogen is a male, is a man? What if we say oxygen is a female, is a woman? Both connected sexually to create a baby called water. You see the point? That's the alchemy of nature. Now, if you want to reproduce an experiment in a laboratory, okay, let's do it. Combine two particles of hydrogen, one particle of oxygen. And are you, are you going to create water? Are you sure about that? The answer is no. No, no, and no. Why? Because something is missing. The fire, the spirit that feeds the real water. You see? Without the spirit and without matter together, there is no life. So those people who pretend that in a laboratory, ignoring the spirit, atheist, materialistic scientists, they believe they can twist the arm of Mother Nature out of arrogance and selfishness and ignorance. They cannot. So basically, again, you know, water is our own semen, and the semen has to be respected, has to be re recognized as a source of life, a divine source of life. It should never be taken for granted. We should never compare semen with urine, like most of people believe. And because of the pleasure that people experience when they lose their semen, you see, they believe this is it. I know everything about sex. I know that this is what I'm looking for in life. I want to have sex as many times as possible, and I want to die having an orgasm. They don't realize that they are feeding the cells, the cancer of cells. They are feeding all illnesses. They are going to die younger. You know that the ancient Adams and the Eves that lived more than a million years ago, did you know that? They lived 1,200 years minimum. Why do we die today only when we are only 100 years? And we admire those who live so long. You see the point? So basically, it's extremely important that our esoteric approach can be comprehended. But it is the fusion of the two other lectures, the scientific approach, the religious approach, and the esoteric approach is a combination of both. But going deeper and deeper and deeper within science and within religion. The word religion means religare in Latin. Religare means reconnect, rejoined. What? We are disconnected from our own spirit. Our own matter is disconnected from the spirit. You see the point? This is why we are a failure. You can be a multimillionaire, you can be a billionaire, but if you are disconnected from the spirit, you are falling into a black hole. And when you die, you won't be able to take to the other side your worth. This is why Jesus Christ said, it will be easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than from a wealthy individual to enter into heaven. You see the point? You can be wealthy, but if you know all this esoteric knowledge, that we shouldn't lose our semen. But here there is something very important to be told, you know, because many people know about this secret. Did you know that Hitler knew about this? And this is why Hitler had so much energy. He was never tired. And he multiplied his energy in an incredible way. But what was the fall of Hitler? The biggest mistake of his life. He didn't change the animal psychology that he carried from the past, from his ancestors. He didn't dissolve the animal psychology to create a, a true human psychology based on love and respect. You see, he continued being an intellectual animal. And with all that powerful energy, he became a powerful monster. And this is exactly what's happening today to people who are in a position of power. Right now, here on Earth, if you're listening to this lecture, please pay attention. Because we are talking to you from soul to soul. From esoteric language to esoteric language. 
if you believe you know about esoteric esotericism, if you don't practice the annihilation of the animal psychology, you are incomplete because you're reinforcing your energies, but you're also becoming a monster with human appearance. And this is exactly what's happening. Did you know, for example, that after the World War II, after the bombs dropped in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, between 1,000 to 2,000 nuclear weapons have been detonated on Earth, under the ocean, on the bottom of the ocean, in desertic places on Earth. We, we have contaminated the atmosphere, the environment, but also are we aware that planet Earth is suspended within space? Don't you feel that every nuclear detonation is moving the planet in a funny way that doesn't correspond to the perfect equilibrium within the cosmic journey? Because our planet is traveling within space and time around our sun, but our sun is also moving. The entire solar system is moving. Do you know that every solar system is a cosmic molecule of a more gigantic organism, a cosmic organism, which is the galaxy, which is the body of a superior being? Are we aware of that? Of course not, because we are sleeping 24 hours a day, because we lose our semen, because we enter into a stage of degeneration. We have lost our consciousness. Consciousness means soul. We have lost our soul. And we, keep, we have created the opposite of soul, which is unconsciousness. And this is what we call ego, the same seven deadly sins of Christianity. Number one, the seven deadly sins, number one is last. Again, don't lose our semen. Don't commit adultery. Number two, anger. Why do we, even, why do we need to be angry? instead of being serene and peaceful. Number three, arrogance. Why do we need to be arrogant when we can be humble, loving and caring with every human being on earth? What about envy? Envy. Why shouldn't we be happy for the success of other people and we can learn from them? What about greed, greed, greed? People, about, people believe greed is good. But you know, it is not good. It's an illusion. It's a, it's a lie told to ourselves. Why don't we learn to be generous in, instead of being greedy? What about laziness instead of being industrious? Falling in love with what we do by doing, developing our own talents and vocations in life. And finally, gluttony. Eating and drinking in excess. Don't you feel that we kill ourselves when we do that? When we develop the seven deadly sins or the animal psychology, which is ego. And we disagree with psychologists and psychiatry who defend the ego. We say they are wrong. Their psychology is outdated. We need a new psychology, a revolutionary psychology. So basically, the synthesis, the doctrine of the synthesis is gnosis. It's the same teachings of Jesus Christ and Moses from a different, more modern angle. When Jesus Christ said, if you want to come after me, deny yourself, he meant deny the animal psychology, deny the ego, and transform the seven deadly sins into the seven virtues, which is true human psychology. Number two, take your cross, the cross, and our reverends and pastors and priests believe, oh, carry the cross on your shoulder the way Jesus did it, walking on the streets of Jerusalem before he was crucified. You know, part of it is true, but the real meaning of it is the cross between a male and a female. What Jesus told Nicodemus, if you want to be born again, you have to work with the water and the spirit with the fire, the sexual energy, and the semen, and transform your semen into, you see, a superior matter, a spiritualizing your matter. When, when the water of the semen becomes steam, it will be able to transform our organism 
our seven endocrine glands will be shining, resurrected because they are dying already. The seven endocrine glands correspond to the seven chakras of yoga. And the Bible speaks in the book of Apocalypse, the Bible speaks about the seven churches of the Apocalypse. They are all connected. You see, we are temples of God. From a spiritual point of view, we are a temple of God. From a scientific point of view, we are a beautiful laboratory. So we need to unite spirit and matter. We need to unite science and religion. And again, sex is life itself. But supra-sex, if you really want to ascend into a superior level of being. So when we come back to the absolute at the end of the times, if we descend from there as a tiny little spark of light, and we enter into the universe of matter and energy, at the same spark, that spark lives in our heart. At the end of the times, shouldn't we come back as a flame where the entire organism made that spark of light to become a flame of light? An ascension, a, a higher level of being, or reaching masterhood, why not? Or at least recuperating what we lost to become a complete human being. That's it. To pay our debts with the universe, with God, with the divinity. And if we can ascend higher than that, to reach an angelical stage, or an archangelical, or even to become an Elohim, a cosmo creator, those who create planets or rule planets, we said that already in past lectures. You know, why not? Is it possible? Of course it is possible. We all have the potential to become super beings, super men, super women. We all have the potential. But we prefer to live like ants, to live a mechanical life. Because of the ego, we are hypnotized by our own negative energy. And we need to recuperate our energies to find that. How do we recuperate our energies? By learning to save our sexual energies, but not practicing celibacy, like some religions preach. That's also wrong. You need a man and a woman who are in love with each other to practice together a superior kind of sex, transforming themselves, transforming their matter into a spirit, learning to spiritualize matter. And when, then we, when we learn to reach certain level of perfection, the spirit will be able to descend and then we'll be able to crystallize the spirit. And then a fusion will happen. And this is the mystery of Christification. Christification. Resurrection. Does it sound incredible? Maybe ridiculous for someone? Probably. But... We are doing it with a lot of respect for everybody. We are talking to everybody, also we are talking to ourselves. We need to learn from life. Life is a school of learning. Alchemy and Kabbalah. We do recommend with all respect, study the Bible, but also to understand Alchemy and Kabbalah, we do recommend that you study the 70 books written by Samael and Veor and compare those books, because those books are unveiling. They are unveiling the Bible, the Jewish books, the Torah, the Sohar, unveiling them, understanding them better. And all ancient books, the Vedas, the Vedas from ancient India, even the religion from Latin America. You know, the, the Incas and the, you know, the ancient Mexico or the ancient Egypt. You see, there are many, many you know, religions that teach the same principles, but they are also written in a codified language. So when we speak about, we respect all religions, we say all religions are good. All religions teach the same principles. There are no difference. The teachings of Jesus Christ are the same of Moses, of Buddha, Lao Tzu from ancient China, Confucius, Confucius from ancient China, Krishna from ancient India, Hesmet Trismegistos from ancient Egypt, Mohammed from the Arab world, Zoroaster from ancient Iran and Iraq, 
Quetzalcoatl from ancient Mexico, the Aztecs and the Mayans, Wiracocha, the ancient Incas. You see the point? All those superior beings, they all learn to fusion spirit and matter. They all resurrected. They all incarnated the cosmic Christ. They were all children, perfect children of creation. So again, this has been an esoteric approach into sexuality, into sexology. And respectfully, we expect that all scientists who are listening to this and all religious who are listening to this can work together in the future. But learning to study alchemy and Kabbalah, because alchemy is the study of true science and Kabbalah is the study of true spirit, the spirit that will descend to fusion with matter when the matter has been spiritualized. And this is the mystery of the cross. This, this is the mystery of all ancient symbols of all religions. Because the, the mystery of the Christ is not only connected with Christianity and, you know, Catholicism. All ancient religions also had a cross. I don't know, you have any question? You say that all religions are the same and yet the principles are the, the same. principles are the same but they're not the same for the vast majority of people out there all religions are not the same that's correct but the institution the, twisted the, everything the string that ties all of them together is sex and sex is the stairway to heaven or the stairway to hell that's correct they someone in in all of these religions took the sex out of the religions that's right? correct that's correct and so yeah Gnosis is putting it back. Yes, totally correct. And um, one of the things that uh, I think is important is that some people in the world might might say, well, don't do that transmutation of the sex, that's dangerous. To tell people to be afraid of this is actually a crime against the Holy Spirit. Everyone has a birthright. Everyone is a sexual human being, well, a sexual humanoid, yeah. okay? And there isn't a human being on earth that doesn't have sex built into them. And so it is their birthright to, first of all, find out about this, find out how to use sex correctly, and you do not ever have to be afraid of this. People who go around saying, oh, yeah. you've got to be afraid of that, they're actually committing a crime against the Holy Spirit. True. You shouldn't be afraid of it. There's nothing That's to correct. be afraid of, That's right? Correct. Yes. In our past lecture, we said that all our sin will be forgiven except one, the one again, the Holy Spirit. Well, that's why we're mortal. That's why we have to that's die. That's correct. That's if correct. The, when, when people, this is way beyond me, of course, pro probably you too, but the, um, the idea of um, resurrecting, Joan of Arc did it, Jesus did it, Moses did it, that is defeating death, as you said, right? It's going beyond death. You're no longer mortal. You have actually... But people don't realize that we always were and always will be at a very deep level. Our essence that can never die, right? But what dies? The physical body dies, right? Yeah. And so as or long transf as, transforms, yeah, you know, yeah. into energy. Yeah. So how can the average person understand immortality? Even Walter Russell talks about immortality. He talks about the life principle, the death principle, and immortality or everlasting life. So the idea of everlasting life from most people's point of view, oh, what's that? I mean, these guys are crazy. They're talking nonsense, right? Yeah. Are we? You know? True. Something you know, yeah, yeah, just one little more comment, you know. Uh, regarding Jesus Christ, he said, uh, annihilation of the ego, you want to come after me, deny yourself. Number two, take your cross every day, or a male and a female working together to ascend together. And number three, follow me, and follow me. It means do what I do, which is preaching to the multitudes, sharing what we are learning about the mysteries of life and death, with the entire human race. Well, that is the same thing in biblical terms that Samuel and Ver talks about, which is the three factors of the revolution of the it's country. Exactly the same. Exactly the it's same. exactly the same thing. There is no difference between Jesus Christ and, and Samuel and Ver. Hmm. 
The title of these three lectures, the, this series, is Sex, A Stairway to Heaven or A Stairway to Hell. So basically, it, everyone has the choice, right? That's correct. We call it free will. But remember that we can do anything we want, but we will have to render account of whatever we have done to superior beings after we die, physically. There is cosmic justice. And if we commit all kinds of atrocities, we develop you know, an accounts payable with the universe. And we will have to cover that debt. Okay, you've been listening to Gnostic Lectures. This is the third lecture of the special series, Sex, A Stairway to Heaven or A Stairway to Hell. My host today, Mr. E. Jim G. Ross. My name is Richard Rucroft. The website is rickyradio.com. We invite your uh, emails at gnosticradio at gmail.com. Thank you very much for listening. And I hope that our lecture has been of some kind of help to everybody. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, so be it, so be it, so be it.